When will cryptocurrency disrupt the current monetary and financial systems and do away with fiat money? I usually hear these bold discussions among crypto enthusiasts. Let us figure out if they are reasonable. My name is Alexey Konosej and you are watching Blockchain State. Speculation begins with the white paper that introduced the first ever cryptocurrency titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. So the title itself tells us that it has something to do with money. Its author, Satoshi Nakamoto, argues in this paper a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. This led to discussions about whether Bitcoin threatens existing financial institutions and national currencies. I don't want to turn this video into a boring academic discussion. Let me try to find the simplest and straightforward answer to all this. I don't think that, at least at this moment, any cryptocurrency is a menace. Most people buy crypto to earn more money. It cannot lead the national currencies to extinction. Besides, we don't measure values in Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency. If I tell you that I've bought a cup of coffee this morning for 56 Satoshi, you'll probably have no clue how much is it in dollars or your local currency. Cryptocurrency is not currency at all. Cryptocurrency has three functions united with one unique feature which distinguishes these functions. Due to its decentralized nature, blockchain technology is an immutable data storage. It underpins cryptocurrency. Past transactions and all published data on blockchain cannot be altered or revoked. Bitcoin is an example of the most protected digital public repository that humankind has ever seen. No centralized technology can ensure this. This brings us to three distinguished functions of cryptocurrency. Store of value. This function to my mind is not the main one, but most people see it first. Because of its speculative nature, you can buy a cryptocurrency and there are many chances that you will extract the same value or even more with time. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's a good store of value. There are obviously better examples, say real estate or gold. Crypto is volatile and you can lose money. The word store in the phrase store of value has more technological sense here than economic. Because a house can be destroyed as a result of a disaster. Even land can go underwater as a result of an earthquake. Something can happen with gold. But the blockchain system which underpins cryptocurrency is highly resistant to any threats and attacks. And whatever you heard about the vulnerabilities of Bitcoin, these are all hypotheses that have no empirical evidence as Bitcoin hasn't been disrupted or notably compromised since its launch in 2009. Under some conditions, such a store of value can become more economically stable and I will elaborate on that in the third function. Peer-to-peer -peer transactions. The second function it's the system for transactions. Contrary to other stores of values, real estate or gold or whatever, cryptocurrency has an embedded environment where users easily transfer these values peer-to-peer -peer without an intermediary. It's a pipeline through which you can transfer values. Once Alice buys crypto for fiat currency, she uploads value in it and then she can send it to someone, for example, abroad to Bob. Bob, upon receipt, will be able to download it by selling it on the local market for local currency. It's much more convenient than bringing gold through a border, for example. And the transaction doesn't require an intermediary such as a conventional financial institution. DApps. And the third function. It's a public repository and a transaction system for decentralized applications. This function is underestimated. The speculative nature of crypto shadows it, but hopefully it will change in the future. It's a true utility function that makes crypto not a currency at all, as a regular currency has no utility function. Blockchain as the technology for applications is different from centralized systems. 
the cryptocurrency which constitutes the core of the blockchain plays the role of the internal payment system. It's not obvious in Bitcoin because it was not explicitly designed for it. It's still applicable for Bitcoin and any blockchain system, but so-called second generation systems are platforms for applications, for example, Ethereum. So you need cryptocurrency to deploy and run applications. It's the internal currency of this system. It's the blood of the system. Coins like red cells circulate in the system and bring valuable assets from one point to another. Miners produce crypto. It is their reward. The payment for work, in the result of which we get a large, highly resistant public immutable repository. You buy crypto to run your application. This is how this reward gets exchanged for an economic value, for money. Otherwise, cryptocurrency is just an electronic record in the blockchain database system. Then you have to burn some coins to run your application. Burn means to destroy some cryptocurrency to commit the transaction with your application. And here lies the fundamental economic mechanism. The supply of cryptocurrency is algorithmically limited. It is not so obvious in Ethereum as the supply here is technically infinite. But the supply is still constrained. As we remember from the theory of economics, the shortage leads to price growth if the demand rises. Here we see this model in action. The coins are burned to run applications. As more transactions occur in the applications, the fewer coins remain in circulation. The price rises and the incentives to participate in production of such coins. With the production miners share their computational resources with the network making the system reliable, which attracts more people to use it as the platform for applications. If we take this feature out of the equation for a moment and leave only speculative nature, it will leave us with a pure bubble because speculators don't utilize this feature of the blockchain. To give you an even more speculative example, you can think of a Ponzi scheme. When people pump money into something that has no utility, say you take a shell and you sell it, you create a profit from something that has no value nothing has been produced because it has no use such an economic model will eventually crush no matter how many people participate in meaningless economic operations when you take the number of cryptocurrency transactions at the moment you will see how many transactions have pure speculative nature at the moment speculation prevails over utility that's why a lot of people believe that crypto is a bubble but there is a growing utility function which makes it not a Ponzi scheme, but an actual commodity. So now we came to the answer when crypto will become less volatile, when the proportion of useful transactions will prevail. In one of my previous videos, I already elaborated on the intrinsic value of cryptocurrency, explaining how blockchain evolved from cryptocurrency to application platforms. By the way, Bitcoin system is also widely used as a platform. Many people just don't know about it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like. This is my reward. And this is how YouTube algorithms know that the video is worthwhile. Subscribe and see you in the next video.